In this video, I want to continue our introduction to important sampling. So just to recap from last time, essentially we found that if we want to work out the expected value of some random variable x, where we're assuming a given probability distribution g, then if g is a discrete distribution, or, or if x is a discrete random variable rather, we can work this out, it's just the sum over all possible values of x, of x times g of x. And we worked out that we could use a bit of a trick to rewrite this as the sum over x of x times g of x over f of x times f of x, because essentially what's happening here is that the f of x's are cancelling where we're assuming that f of x is some other distribution that we are able to sample from. And so what we then said was that essentially this is just the expected value of this first part of the expression, but now in terms of this new distribution f. So we could approximate this using kind of Monte Carlo sampling as just 1 over n times the sum from i equals 1 to n, where n is just our sample size, the number of samples that we're drawing, of g of x i f over f of x i f times, you can't really see it here, I'm going to write it down at the bottom, times x i f. And we said that this first part of the expression here is what we refer to as an important weight. So just to reiterate here, we're saying that the superscript here tells us what distribution the x's have come from. So here the x's have been sampled from the distribution which is described by f of x as its probability distribution function. And we said that this is handy because if we can't sample from g, but nonetheless we're able to work out the ratio of the, of the distribution values of g to f, then nonetheless if we can sample from f, we can still work out properties of g. And that's useful in a range of circumstances. Whilst all of the previous was concerning discrete distributions, the same holds for continuous ones as well. So let's say I want to work out now the expected value under some continuous density g of the random variable x, which is a continuous random variable now. So to work this out, all I do is I integrate x times g of x dx, where I'm assuming that I'm integrating over all of the range of x. And we can use exactly the same trick, except the only difference is we've got an integral sign at the beginning and then a dx at the end. So we just have x times g of x over f of x dx. And as before, we can just approximate this as 1 over n times the sum from i equals 1 to n of our importance weights w i f times x i f, where w i f is the same as it was before. Whilst I've shown that this relationship holds for working out the expected value of x, it actually holds for any other function as well. So let's say I want to work out the expected value of x squared. Well, we know how to do that in terms of probability. All we do is we integrate, now we've got x squared times g of x dx. And then the only thing that changes about this, if I want to approximate this, is I have 1 over n times the sum from i equals 1 to n of w i f times x i f squared. So just to be clear, I'm not squaring the f here, it's just I've got two superscripts now. And whilst this holds for x squared, it holds for any other function, as I say. So if I have some sort of function gamma of x, and I want to work out its expectation, then I can just, well, let's just jump straight to the expectation. That's 1 over n times the sum from i equals 1 to n of w i f times, oh, now we're going to have gamma of x i f. So it seems that important sampling is a bit of magic. We don't need to necessarily be able to sample from one distribution to be able to learn its properties. However, there are circumstances under which important sampling works well, and there are many circumstances when it doesn't. I'm now going to use an example to illustrate some of the circumstances when it works well, and when, importantly, it doesn't. So we're imagining now that I want to learn the properties of this light blue distribution here, which I'm calling g of x. 
And I have a choice over the other distribution to use, my importance distribution to use in importance sampling. I can either sample from the uniform distribution, which is shown here as the orange dotted line, and we're going to call that distribution f of x, or I can sample instead from this dark blue distribution, which I'm going to call h of x. And the question is, you know, which one of these should I choose? And this is a common problem in kind of statistics. We don't get told which distributions are the right one to use. So in this circumstance, you know, which one should we choose? Because remember that, you know, under expectation, both of these should be right. So remember what we're trying to work out. Let's imagine we're trying to work out, in this case, the mean of the distribution. That gives us kind of two different ways of working it out if we use the uniform sampling case, then we work this out by a sort of sample mean of 1 over the sum from i equals 1 to n of, I'm now going to sort of explicitly write this out, of x i f times g of x i f divided through by f of x i f. Okay, that's in the kind of uniform case. Now, if we instead use the dark blue line, then instead our Monte Carlo sum becomes, for a different sample, the sum of i equals 1 to n of x i h times g of x i h over h of x i h. So we know that in a sort of asymptotic limit, in other words, I have an infinite sample size, that both of these give the correct answer. But in a finite sample, which one of them do we expect to have a larger variance? What we're actually going to see is that if we use the dark blue line, in other words, h of x is our importance sampling distribution, then we are going to have a lower variance in our estimates of the mean of g of x than we would do in the orange case. And in a minute, I'm going to sort of more thoroughly prove why the dark blue line gives a better, uh, a lower variance than does the dotted orange line. For the time being, it's quite easy to think why this is actually the case. It's because of the fact that if I'm sampling from the uniform distribution, a lot of the time I'm going to sample in its tails. So I might sort of obtain samples that look like this, and occasionally I will sample, you know, in the middle here. But those samples in the middle are vastly outweighed by the number that are in the tails. And the problem with the ones in the tails is that they don't really contribute much to this sum because their weighting is very, very low. So what does that mean? It means that our sum is essentially quite a lumpy thing. It's either got quite big values if we happen to sample somewhere near the middle, or it's got very small values. And because of this kind of lumpy nature of our sum, that means that the variance of the estimates that we get via using the uniform distribution are relatively high. Whereas contrast that with the other case. In the other case where we're sampling from h of x, the dark blue, most of the time we're actually sampling somewhere in the middle. Occasionally we will sample in the tails, but most of the time we are just sampling in the middle. And because of that, our sum is quite, or it contains quite homogeneous terms. And because of this homogeneity, that essentially means that we're going to have a lower variance in estimates. So now to prove that I'm not just making all of this up, I'm actually going to go ahead and simulate what I've been talking about using Mathematica. So in the top row here, I have the kind of results for using F, which is this orange continuous uniform distribution. And in the bottom row here, I have the results for simulating using the dark blue line, which is our kind of curvy h of x that we think is going to do slightly better. In both cases, in the right-hand side, I have the true mean of the blue, which I've just shown as a dotted black line, and I'm going to show you both the running mean and the current value in our sum. So importantly here, I'm not showing the value that we sample, I'm showing the contribution of that sample to the sum. And what we can see is, as I sort of run this, that the in the top case, where we're sampling from f of x, most of the time, the contributions are very, very small. You can see that down in the bottom part of the plot here. 
Occasionally we do sample somewhere towards the middle, which means that occasionally our sum jumps up a fair bit. However, in the bottom case here, we're doing much better because of the fact that most of the time we're sampling towards the, the sort of middle of the distribution. And because of that, if I just let this go to the end now, because of that, we can see that we're getting a much smaller variability in the contributions in our sum. And because of that smaller variability, we've actually converged to the true value at a much faster rate than it appears to be the case for using the uniform distribution. Now, as I've said, I want to provide some intuition as to why we see those results mathematically. So the thing that we're trying to work out, remember, is the expectation under G of X. And I'm gonna call this quantity here mu, just because it saves me having to write it out each time. I'm gonna show now that if we choose an importance distribution, which I'm just gonna call F now, and F is different to the previous F. If I choose a distribution F, which is equal to G of X times X over mu, then in that circumstance, we will get a zero variance estimator. In other words, we will always get the true value. Of course, this is unrealistic because it requires that we actually know mu, but nonetheless, it provides intuition as to what the shape of our important sampling distribution should be. Essentially, it should be something like g of x times x, which is relatively similar to the dark blue line that we showed, but it's certainly nothing like the orange continuous uniform distribution that we were showing. So why, if we choose an importance distribution that looks like this, do we get out an estimator that has zero variance? So let's just write out what our estimator actually is. So mu hat, I'm putting a hat on it now to emphasize the fact that it's an estimator, is equal to one over n times the sum from i equals one to n of g of x i, where x has been sampled from a distribution f, divided through by the importance distribution. And that's just that up here. So we're going to have on the bottom here g of x i f times x of x i f, and then we're going to have a mu on the top. But our estimator also needs an x i out the front, so we're going to have an x i f there. And hopefully you can see that the top g i is a g of x i is going to cancel with the bottom, and so are the x's. And so we're just going to be left with a sum of mu. And the sum of mu is just going to have n times mu, so we just get 1 over n times n mu, which equals mu. And mu is just a constant. It doesn't have any variability. Because of that, that means that the variance of our estimator would be equal to zero, because the variance of a constant is zero. So we can see that the choice of importance distribution actually matters, which means that if we want to learn something about a distribution G that we don't know much about and we use a poor approximation to G or, or something like that. Remember that we sort of found that our ideal important sampling distribution should sort of have a shape of G times X where we're trying to work out the expected value of X. If we use a poor approximation to G times X in this case, we're going to get out a estimator that has a very high variance that won't be useful practically. So what do we see? We see that in importance sampling, the choice of importance distribution matters a lot.